today and welcome back to the shed. In part one of this video I had a look over this Chrysler Projector Graphic Model 3K40 console radio made in Sydney in 1939. I took the chassis out of the cabinet, set it up on the bench and had a closer look over it. I took the tubes out in preparation for doing some uh, preliminary checks and possibly applying power to the chassis. I took the speaker out of the cabinet as well and checked it over and after checking the transformer um, applied restricted power and um, checked some voltages. But with the speaker plugged into the circuit it became apparent that uh, I had a problem. Some component somewhere was pulling the B plus voltage down to 21 volts. It should be around 250 to 300 at least. After a few false leads a process of elimination revealed uh, the cause of the problem this fat paper capacitor strapped to the side of the chassis. So just for the exercise I decided to stuff the capacitor and mount it back in its original position. With the capacitor replaced uh, the voltages were looking a lot healthier. So finally I applied power and managed to get some sound out of it. Before I um, start doing the recap and uh, service clean up, I just thought I'd uh, give the band switch and any other contacts around the place a good spray with contact cleaner. I'll just uh, work that around a bit uh, in the hope of just getting a little bit better performance out of it. I think uh, there are a few dodgy contacts in there. So do this one. Let's see if that makes a difference. You never know your luck. Well, I've just uh, powered it up again, and uh, I'm getting plenty of volume now. Uh, yes, it doesn't happen that often, but we're having a fairly good one. Uh, it's been a long way, and we've had some pretty crummy ones. This Professor George Milne has modelled the reopening process in data... ...of WA farmers are struggling with skill shortages, uh, and look, those skills... Yeah, not much up that end of the dial. Anyway, uh, it is now um, operating much better. Um, still a bit to go. I think a, a, a recap will do wonders for it. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to do an alignment on this radio because uh, I don't have any details of the alignment, but uh, we'll see. I've got the valves out. I thought I'd start off with uh, just giving the chassis a basic clean up and um, then I'll probably go ahead with the recap and do a final clean up after that. Um, it's not looking too bad. Most of what looked like rust before is actually just dust, reddish coloured dust.
That's not coming up too badly. It does have this spotted appearance, which is surface rust, I suppose, but there's no actual rust involved in it. I might give it a wipe over with rust converter. Well, as you can see, it hasn't cleaned up too badly. There's still a good deal of pitting and rust on the chassis, um, but I don't propose to go any further with it at this stage. I'll have to have a think about what I do with it. I really don't want to um, paint it if I can help it. Uh, I'm not sure if I can maybe take off these IF cans to clean them up a bit. That would make it easier and uh, but it also uh, of course risks damage. I'll just see how I go with it. Let's just see how we go with this one. It's held in with some kind of spring. Uh, I think I'll leave it for now. So I've started on the first electrolytic. This is the one on top of the chassis. So I've taken the uh, vanilla base off it, um, uh, off the pins, prized the paper off, taken out the little cap on the end, and I've made a hacksaw cut around here. Now I know this is a pretty brutal thing to do and I'm sure a lot of people will be horrified but uh, I'm going to have a go at it. Um, there we go. I'll clean that out, fit a new capacitor in it and I'm not sure how I'll join that up but I'll probably, I've got some metallic aluminium tape I'll wrap around that Put it back in its cardboard tube and it should look pretty original. Fairly brutal, I know, but look, you know, what can you do? Okay, so this is how it ended up. I've got the can wire soldered to that. This is soldered on the other side of the, uh, the base. Um, I'll just put this little disc on top, the plastic sleeve slips over it and I'll just glue that down with something or other, but it looks alright, um, amateur job I know but mm, it's alright. Just trying to get these uh, old electrolytics desoldered from the chassis and um, the soldering iron does struggle to melt the solder so what I've done is I've got the, the heat gun and I've set the temperature to 400 which should easily melt solder and I'm just going to heat this up with the heat gun. It will take a minute or two but I have done this before and it works very well. takes a while. Yep, that's that's off. Oh, fingers getting burnt there. How are we going here? Come on. go and the last one might need a bit more heat on him not yet there we 
it does. It's hard to film this the right way up, but I just thought I'd show you what I've done here. I have a number of earth leads from capacitors all to join onto the, the chassis here. And um, I was wondering how I was going to get uh, get them all soldered onto the chassis with one without one lifting off while I heat up the other one. So I've soldered this little wire loop into the chassis and I'm going to attempt to uh, feed the other leads through the loop. Um, we can start with this one, that can go through there. Uh, this one will go through it from there. This one from this direction. Uh, put him through from there. Yep. Now we have another one from here. And we have this big fat one, which I may not be able to get through the loop, but I'll solder that onto ground separately. So let's hope I can uh, get them all together. And there we have it. Everything seems to be um, solidly attached. Um, so I think that should make a, a satisfactory earthing point. Well, I'm about halfway through the recap. I've replaced most of the uh, electrolytics and a couple of the paper capacitors. And unfortunately, I've run out of capacitors. I have uh, put in an order for some more, but uh, unfortunately, due to the vagaries of the post of postal service, uh, they haven't yet arrived. So I would like to see how it performs with the, pa with the electrolytics replaced. Uh, so I'm just uh, going to tack in a couple of capacitors. I've got this point one that I got at the local electronics shop and a few more like that. And a 25 um, mic electrolytic to replace this 16 which should do for the time being uh, and I just want to pile, uh, power it up and uh, see if that has made any improvement to its performance so far. So I'm just going to tack this, uh, this capacitor in place of the point one that I've already removed. Um, I just got a few of these from the local electronics shop and they're they're only rated at I think 400 and something volts as opposed to the 600 um, rating of the ones I usually use. Uh, so I'm only going to tack it in temporarily and I'll replace it uh, when my order arrives. I'll just pop that down to there, that goes to ground. I may not even be able to melt the ground. Oh yeah, there we go, it is melting. Let's put a little bit more on that. Yep, that, that looks good. And I'll just take this one off at this end. Yep. And that is the positive end, so positive to positive, yep. It is quite spectacular if you put them in the wrong way around. just there. Uh, yep. That all looks good. So let's put the valves in and uh, apply some power and uh, see what happens. Um, uh, I just wanted to say, just to remind you, 
Well, that's operating. I don't know if it's any better than it was before. It is uh, running on dim bulb and it didn't bring up very much at all on dim bulb before. Uh, but all looks okay, so I'm going to go to full power. It's going to be a tricky one for all the sports around, not only Australia, but around the world, in, in relation to this particular issue and getting vaccinated. Um, just sort of also wanted to say, well done to WA boys for their win the cricket today, but I really that want sounds to okay. Well there is a bit of hum really behind it, though. Um, we like to see a bit concerned about that. I don't... Wilson, so in the sort of nature of the state. Chris McConnell lives and works in Mansfield. Pretty quiet town. That is a pretty big truck, and then it got worse. The actual walls started to rumble a bit, and I could feel it in my feet. And I thought, hang on, that's not a truck. And I thought, hang on. All right. Um, well, it does seem to be uh, operating somewhat better. There's less distortion. Uh, there is that hum behind every station, but I think that's probably a shielding issue, and I uh, still have a lot of paper capacitors in there that I haven't changed. Uh, so, look, I'll... Um, I'll continue with the recap when the capacitors arrive, but I think in the meantime uh, I'll uh, continue with cleaning up the chassis and I think I will have to probably give this uh, this chassis uh, a coat of paint because it's really not coming up as well as I'd hoped. Well, I've just taken the valves out in preparation to uh, clean up the chassis. I've removed the light fitting and um, I was just about to start uh, dealing with this rust but now my packet of capacitors has arrived so I've decided to um, put that on hold for the moment and I'll go ahead with the recap as I originally planned. So we've got some um, 16 UFs which I need a couple of. Uh, we've got 0.047 0 0.001, 0 0.1. Now that's what I need because I found all of these capacitors that were inside those funny little metal cans um, are all 0.1. Um, so I'm going to need a few of those. Well I guess we'll start with this electrolytic. I put a 25, a 24 UF in here. Uh, was the need originally uh, a 16 and while the 24 I'm sure works fine I would rather have it um, to original spec and may create too much of a surge on power up and eventually stress the transformer I don't know just guessing um, so here we have a but new 16 UF cap Look, I think I might just um, put a little bit of heat shrink on that just for the sake of uh, safety and appearance. So we can hook that through. Yep, there it goes, it's through. go around to ground there but I'll leave the ground off for the moment because I still have to put in that I still have to replace that waxy next to him so I'll uh, solder both the grounds at the same time now I'll take out this waxy and I'm going to leave a good deal of lead oh no that just came straight out of the solder that, that's good <laughs> alright and that also goes to that same solder lug now why would you do that we've got both a 16 mic electrolytic and a 0.1 paper cap both going to ground from the same point so I guess the end result is 16.1 UF capacitor um, doesn't make sense nevertheless I'll replace 
it with what was there before. I did notice that on the circuit diagram actually. It's attached here to the aerial coil and on the circuit it shows a, um, an electrolytic, a 16 mic cap um, and uh, a point 0.1 both going to ground from the same point. Um, I couldn't work out, maybe there's some logical wa reason for it but uh, I couldn't work it out. Uh, now since I put heat shrink on the electrolytic I think I'll also put heat shrink on the uh, on the uh, point one. I've been trying to come up with something a little bit neater than what I've already done, done here. You can see here the uh, the capacitor goes through the hole in the chassis. The can will fit over that from underneath, soldered to earth here. Uh, but it doesn't look anything like original. So I'll show you what I've come up with. Right, I've cut out some of these small cardboard discs, I cut them out of gasket material and this is as much a proof of concept as anything I suppose but what I'm going to do is put the capacitor leads through it like that and sit that up through the chassis and um, see if that looks neater. That should just cover the hole and the can will fit on the back of it. Okay, so here we have the new capacitor soldered in place uh, next to the 16UF electrolytic and next to it we have one of the old capacitors uh, in place. I think that looks neater than just uh, having the um, capacitors in the hole like we have over here, um, like that. So I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and do that with the rest of them. Well, I've got four of them in, um, here, 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 and over here. Um, I'm not going to do the electrolytic because it uh, will be a little bit too difficult. Uh, but there are these. There are these ones in underneath the band switch uh, down here um, down there there and there and another one under there and they're going to be more difficult to get in and it's become a bit tedious making up the little washers so I've set up a a uh, production line and uh, I thought I'd do a, a batch of them. And I've set up um, the little production line here. I've got uh, a one millimeter drill in the Dremel and I've cut out uh, some shapes out of the uh, gasket material I was using. I've also started making up some some little pigtails for them. I'll have to make a few more of those before I'm ready and then I'll try and put those remaining five difficult capacitors uh, in that corner under the band switch. So, I've got one, two, three, four, five of these capacitors, five little discs and five little pigtails, and now the fun part begins, I get to put them in. Well, I guess I'll try one of the easy ones first. Uh -huh. None of them look particularly easy. Just snip him out of his spot. Got him. Lots 
swimming. I think I'm going to have to remove this wire from the aerial just so I can get in there. Gee, it's blowing up a bit of a storm outside by the sound of it. So there he is down there. And that green thing is a resistor, I presume, uh, marked 400. It measures 420 ohms, so I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm sure it's all right. Not the neatest job, but it's very difficult to get at. Well, I've got the last of those little um, 0.1 UF capacitors soldered in um, to there. There's another two down here there and there and another one over here um, I've just got this little Chanex 0.05 cap to replace and then I'm done with uh, with the recap pretty much so uh, I'll give it a quick clean up underneath and then turn it over and we'll give it a test run I didn't video putting the others in, partly because I understand YouTube objects to extreme profanity and partly because it wasn't exactly riveting viewing. So I'll just finish this last one off and we'll be done. And that's it. Recap finished. Okay, well I've got the valves back in, an aerial connected, speaker connected, I think everything's set to go. Let's uh, set it to dim bulb and give it a test. 
and the bulb is doing what it should dimming off and hopefully as the tubes start to conduct it will brighten up a little bit not hearing anything yet it's certainly dimmer than it was before I uh, changed all the caps Which is we're we're actually so it makes sense that that is not those people. It sounds a bit distorted, but it's still on dim bulb. She's talking pragmatically. You know what I'm saying? I get it. I feel it. I just can't always be thinking about what. Okay, well, I'll turn off dim bulb and we'll go to full power. talking about those 2001 town hall videos. It ended when you started trying to put me down. How, if you watch the whole thing, there's a pattern that emerges. You see a lot of black people dressed in their Sunday best. Excuse me, let me finish talking, please, sir. Thank you. And making a deliberate point to speak respectfully and calmly. I hope God. It's beautiful work. Um, I wonder if you could just describe, I'm looking at a... Well that sounds quite good. Uh, I don't think I've done anything terribly wrong with the recap. So um, what am I going to do next? I want to clean up those IF cans and I'm still considering whether I'm going to paint the chassis. Actually I was getting a little bit uh, ahead of myself there. Before I go ahead with cleaning up the chassis or anything I'd like to check some voltages. So I've got it powered up on the bench here, um, full power, and uh, first let's have a look at the uh, the plate. Uh, that is pin three. One, two, three. We have 220 volts. I guess that's pretty much okay. Uh, the screen is 224 and uh, let's have a look at the grid. Now the cathode is grounded so grid to cathode we should be getting here we've got minus 10 is that right? I'll just put it on in the 20 volt range grid to cathode minus 10.6 10.7 well that's looking pretty healthy what I would like to see Okay, I might check a couple of the other um, plate voltages, but um, basically I'm pretty happy with that. I knew when I took these little cans off that uh, getting them back in was going to be challenging, and uh, I was right. Okay, plan B. I'm going to tape the screw in position and turn the chassis upside down. I had the idea of putting a mirror underneath the chassis um, so I can see what I'm doing on both sides. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Now holding the screw in with my finger I need to get a screwdriver on it. That actually worked. Uh -oh, I'm in danger of losing it here. Now, try and hold the nut and turn the screw, and success, it's going in, that is good, yep, happy with that, alright, the next one, and it's going to have a similar issue because the screw is right next to that blob of solder, but I don't think it's as tight as that one. Anyway, you don't want to watch me doing this 20 times, so I'll uh, leave it for now and come back when I've finished. Oh, it's now late afternoon and I've finally got them all in. A couple there, a row of three there, and the most challenging ones were these up in the RF section. You can just see them through there. 
down there and down there so now I guess I'll put the chassis the other way up and continue with uh, tidying it up and um, there's a few issues I've got to deal with still I've got a couple more things to do before I um, take the chassis off the stand uh, one is to remove this diffuser panel which is quite warped and um, dirty and see if I can clean it up and um, perhaps flatten it out a bit it works I guess as well I don't know I haven't really had it on there goes a, a nut um, hopefully I won't do it any damage I guess being a 1939 radio it's likely to be celluloid or something um, not quite sure what it's made of it's, it feels almost like a paper a paperish material but I doubt that that would be the case and it's just held in the frame here by three screws on the bottom which I've already taken out and three on the top here not losing lost it I'll pick that up in a minute got a couple of other things I want to do to the front panel here um, clean up this dial mechanism speaking of the dial mechanism I think I at first thought it was strung with fishing line and that that was something I'd done it's not it's actually fine wire and it's in perfect condition so I'm not going to leave it I'm not going to do anything with it all the little pulleys are made of wood which is a little bit unusual but I suppose it is quite an old set anyway I'm just going to mark where these screws came from because there's a number of holes there that one's obvious that one not so much and on the bottom here that one that one and that one and see if I can just lift it out There's a few things in the way there mm. okay that's more or less out Perhaps I'd be better to try and take it out forward. I'll get rid of the spring washer. and there we have it well at the very least I can give it a clean up um, and uh, hopefully flatten it out a little bit I'll just give this um, 
dial dial mechanism a bit of a clean up as well and this switch uh, I've got a couple of grommets here I need to replace uh, and the dial cursor which is this piece of I guess celluloid again uh, I'll see if I can clean that up it's a bit yellowed but it uh, it goes behind the dial glass so you don't actually see it so I don't think any yellowing will be noticeable I'll also restring these little um, indicators for the volume tone and waveband switch while I'm here I have another issue with the waveband switch which I'll show you later when I turn the chassis around um, the shaft has been araldited into the uh, into the switch and I can't move it I might have to drill it out now where's that nut I dropped on the floor the grommet around these wires to the potentiometer came out in well, pieces rock hard so I've got my little bag of grommets here and see what I've got and that one looks about right I'm not going to unsolder that I'm going to cut it and um, work it in that way There, that's sitting nicely. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I've taken the string off the volume control that uh, moves that pointer and I think this pot must have been changed at some time because it doesn't have any way of anchoring the string to the spindle uh, whereas uh, the others have a screw in the spindle. So that's not very satisfactory. Um, before I restring it, I'll, I'm going to try putting a hole in it with the Dremel and perhaps inserting a pin. Got my trusty one millimetre drilling here. Need a bit better light here. I never seem to have light in quite the right place. Yeah, that's pretty good. This is going to take a long time. not sure if I'm blunting that drill or not. I might try a slightly larger drill in the um, just in the cordless drill. Okay I'm using a slightly larger drill in the Dremel. The, um, the 1.5 mil drill still wouldn't fit in the chuck of the, uh, the cordless drill so I'm going to try this. It certainly has more bite to it. There we go. Uh, 
uh, put a little wire loop through that or I might just be able to thread the cord through it and um, restring it that way. Just having a look at this tuning mechanism, it's a two string system with one this string running the inner drum and the outer drum runs the wire cord which moves the, the pointer. But it's quite ingenious, it has this, um, the string is fixed at both ends and winds on and off this long uh, brass rod. And so it can't slip because it's fixed at both ends. It does have um, effectively a clutch mechanism with this spring holding tension on the brass rod and the spindle is actually free to move inside the rod but um, it's held there by the spring clutch so when you get to the end of travel it will still slip but uh, it's uh, I think the original mechanism and it's still going after 80 odd years I haven't had to do anything to it apart from clean it up a bit so quite impressed and you can see my little soldered repair on the um, on the wire cord going through there nice mechanism and I can't help compare it to the Philips console I recently worked on which had uh, a, uh, a conventional um, dial string around the spindle and uh, that drove a drum which uh, fed a wire cable through through an outer cable like a bicycle cable or something uh, and it was diabolical to work on and uh, very hard to get running nicely whereas this needs very little work after after 80 odd years I'm impressed So it's all back together and uh, I just thought I'd give it a run to make sure I hadn't done anything extremely silly uh, but it seems I haven't because it still works so that's a good thing. Well I've cleaned up the tuning mechanism um, as best I can. It doesn't look pretty but uh, it seems to be working well and I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, white lithium grease on the um, on the rail that the tuner slides on that should uh, keep it going well for some time to come a little bit along here and on the sliders for the uh, volume and tone and band switch indicators as well where those slide because they were quite quite sticky on there a little bit along there and uh, they should continue to function for some time to come them back in okay well I think we'll call this the end of part two there's still a few things to do uh, I have to deal with that band switch issue um, I've cleaned the dial glass but I have to put that back on and I'll still have to make up some kind of light shield for the uh, the dial light globe in there um, but I think we'll have to put that all into part three uh, hopefully I'll have that in about uh, two weeks time and then it's on to the cabinet uh, which will be the main part of part three so thanks for watching and I hope you can join me in the shed for part three